Okay, hello everyone. This is the final of the uh, basically the the quant problems that are available on the ETS website. We will be doing more more problems in the future, more official ETS problems, but they will just be from different sources. Anyway, so this this group this group of problems is uh, data interpretation. Data interpretation problems usually come at the end of a quant set, towards the end. And they come in groups. You're going to be given a graph like this one, and you'll be given multiple questions. In this case, we have three. So the first thing I would say for, for these types of problems is to read the graph. You don't want to, you don't want to get stuck in the weeds on a problem and not realize that um, what you're looking for uh, is, is not available or, or yeah. So let's just read the graph first. So it says the annual percentage change in the dollar amounts of five different stores between 2006 to 2008. So in 2006 to 2007, we had a 10% change. This is a positive number, so that's an increase for store P. And then the next year, it decreases by 10%. Okay, store Q decreases by 20%, then increases by 9%. And then we have more, more numbers here. Okay, let's, let's answer, answer the questions. If the dollar amount of sales of store P was 800,000, so we have an amount in 2006 when it all started, what was the dollar amount of sales when it all ended in 2008? We have a 10% increase the first year and a 10% decrease the second year. Do not be tricked. A 10% increase followed by a 10% decrease does not mean you start you end where you started. Let me illustrate. A um, hundred percent increase means doubling something, right? A hundred percent decrease means losing everything. If you were to start off with a hundred dollars and you had a hundred percent increase, you would end up with two hundred dollars, right? Followed by a hundred percent decrease, though, would go back back down to zero. You start off with 100 and you end at zero. Even though the increase and the decreases, the absolute values of the two uh, cha percentage changes were the same. That, that kind of illustrates the point. That means a 10% decrease followed by a 10% or 10% increase followed by a 10% decrease does not, does not mean that you end the same way. So let's actually calculate it. If you want a 10% increase of something, you can multiply the beginning number times 10% of it, which is multiplying by 0.1 and add that to the original. 800,000 plus 800,000 times 0.1, which is gonna be 80,000, is 880,000. That is a 10% increase. There is a simpler way to do it though. You could multiply it by 110%. 800,000 multiplied by 1.1 will give you the same answer. It's just one less step. And I would encourage you to do that. 10% more of something is 110% of it. And I would encourage you to try that out with the next step. We have a 10% decrease. Instead of multiplying our number 880,000 times 10% and subtracting that from the 880,000, I would think to myself, what is 10% less of something? It's 90% of something. You can multiply that 880,000 by 0.9, and that will give you your final answer. Let's see what it is. My, my guess is, yeah, 792,000. Using a GRE calculator, very simple. Very simple stuff. Okay. The trick was just uh, trying to trick people into picking C. All right. Keep that in mind, that rule in mind, by the way, for another problem in the future in this set. So now let's start off with uh, number two. At store T now, the dollar amount of sales for 2007 was what percent of the dollar amount of sales for 2008? So in this case, we do not have numbers. So in 2007, it was what percent of the numbers in 2008? So if they're exactly the same, Let's say if it's 100 compared to 100, it would be 100%, right? 
If it were any less, it would be a smaller percentage than 100. If it were any more, then it would be a greater percentage than 100. When you get a percentage like this, you need to compare the original over the compare group. We're comparing 2007 over the compare group, which is 2008. All right, so the 2007 number will be over the 2008 number. We don't actually have numbers here, but it doesn't matter. You can just pick numbers. I would pick 100 because it's easiest to work with with percentages. So in 2007, this is store T, right? In 2007, store T increased from 2006 to 2007. Store T increased by 17%. If we started at 100 and we increased by 17%, we would end up with 117 because 17% 17 of 100 is 17. That's why it's easiest to pick 100 to start with. So we have 117 as our numerator for sure. We're going to compare it to our denominator 8% less. You could multiply 170 by 0 0.08, which is 8% and subtract it. Or you could think, what is 8% less of something? It's 92% of something. 170, or sorry, 117 times 0 0.92 is the 2008 number. And that's gonna be your final denominator, 117 over whatever that answer is, is going to give you uh, 1.0869. Notice how the numerator is greater than the denominator, so it must be over 100% of the other number. By the way, if you, if you intuitively know that the percentage is going to be greater than 100, then you can kind of use that as a check for yourself. If you're getting a number that's ridiculous, it's like a small percentage of something, or it's like many, many times greater, then you can use that, like, you can kind of, you should have an alarm going off in your head telling you like, okay, something is definitely off. I did something wrong here. Um, notice how I don't even know what they did. It doesn't matter. Do it, do it the way I taught you, um, or you, do, you can do it this way. You can pause it and read what they did. But um, I, I like to start off with, uh, just picking numbers. It's usually much easier in the GRE to pick numbers for things. All right. Number three, based on the information given, which of the following statements must be true? Okay. For 2008, the dollar amount of sales at store R was greater than that at each of the other four st stores. Okay. Well, it doesn't tell us anything about any dollar amounts at all. So that's just not right. It's impossible to know. It doesn't tell us about any of the starting amounts. I mean, technically in a question it does, but it doesn't tell us about any of the others. It tells us about store P, but none of the others. So. Uh, the dollar amount, so that's not a right answer. The dollar amount of sales at store S for 2008 was 22% less than, this, than 2006. So let's look at store S. We go, ooh, it's a 7% decrease, but it's all, followed by a 15% decrease. Now the sum of those two numbers is negative 22. But that, again, does not mean that the percentage change over those two years was 22%. In fact, it will be more. What you can do is you start off with 100, multiply it by 0.93, which is a 7% decrease, and then get that number and multiply it by 0.85. You will notice that the answer is something less than uh, 88. 88 would be a, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, 78. 78 would be a 22% decrease. Um, and it's going to be smaller than 0. 0.78 or 78. Okay. The dollar amount of sales at store R in 2008 was more than 17% greater than 2006. Let's see. 2008, uh, store R, right? Store R, yep. Yeah. 
2008, we start off with five and then we end up with 12. Okay, the sum of five and 12 is 17. We just saw that the percentage change was greater than the sum, and that's gonna be this case again. So 5% more than 100 is gonna be 105, and 12% more than 105 is going to be something greater than 117, which would be 17% increase. It's going to be greater than that. You can do it in the calculator though. So there you go, just C. Just C is the answer here. All right, so we've completed all the problems. You can, um, you can do all these problems in the description. Uh, you'll, find, you'll find the link. And in the next video, I'll be working on the verbal problems. So thank you for watching all the way to the end. And um, if you want to help me out, please subscribe. Uh, and if you need more help yourself, consider going to my website to schedule a lesson with me. Just click on the link in the description. It's applyconfidently.com. And uh, click on the schedule a free call button. And say that you saw this on YouTube, and I'll give you a 10% discount for any service. So have a good day. And I'll see you next time.